must be considered. By using this system of measurement as a check on your estimates, your judgment of the effective range will improve. The entire problem of hitting is mainly created by the speed of the target. In aiming at the target, your shooting becomes an interception problem. You must shoot at a ghost target out in space, which, when your bullets arrive, will become the enemy plane. To give the correct amount of lead on a target, a fixed gunner must know to an accurate degree what speed the target is making. By recognizing the aircraft and remembering its performance, you may determine its speed by its attitude, in other words, the way it is flying. When its line of flight is through its center line, it would be flying at about cruising speed. If the tail is high in level flight, it is flying at maximum speed. Climbing should indicate about three quarters of its cruising speed. In a dive, it may be anything up to its limits of strength. On sighting a target, your first estimation must be of its speed. If it is far in error, your subsequent work will be hopeless. However, in actual combat, you cannot become involved in higher mathematics to determine how much lead to give an enemy plane. You may have only a few seconds before the target is gone. By using a thumb rule, you can quickly calculate how much lead to give a target on a full deflection shot. It is based on the effective range of 1,000 feet, the speed of the target, and the average bullet velocity of 1,000 feet for four-tenths of a second. It is simply this, the ratio between knot speed and mill units is three to two. For instance, if a plane is at a distance of 1,000 feet and its speed is 75 knots, it will require a lead of 50 mils. In the same proportion, a plane going 150 knots would be led by the 100 mil range. However, you will seldom have a beam or full deflection shot at the target. In practice, it will be necessary to fire from various angles, each requiring a different mill lead. Although the actual lead will remain the same, it will appear to be less as the shooting angle decreases. This is due to foreshortening. In other words, while the flipper is always aimed at this point, the amount of mill lead decreases as the angle becomes more acute. The degree of change can be measured on your sight. For instance, if the shooting angle is about halfway between the stern shot and a beam shot, the lead on your sight will measure only three-fourths of the full lead. When the shooting angle is about here, the lead on your sight will be approximately one half of the full lead. Here it is one quarter. And when you're dead astern, the pippa will appear on the target. It will be necessary for you to memorize these various deflection angles so that you can determine the mill lead for each. The following will show you five shooting angles and the amount of mill lead to give each one. When your plane is a beam of the target between 60 and 90 degrees, use full deflection. Since the ratio between target speed and mill units is three to two, a plane going 150 knots would be led by the 100 mil ring. When you have a quartering shot at the target from about 30 to 60 degrees, the lead decreases to three-fourths of the full 100 mil lead, or in this case, 75 mils. 
If the shooting angle is between 15 and 30 degrees, one half of the full deflection is correct, or 50 mils. If the target is on a bearing of 15 degrees or less, use one fourth deflection, or 25 mils. When the target is dead ahead, use no deflection. When you do this, you must be directly astern of the target so that your line of sight is in his line of flight. While we run through this again, note carefully the shooting angles and the corresponding deflections. Full lead, three quarters, one half, one quarter, and here you can lay the old pipper right on him. It is apparent that a moving target rapidly converts a beam shot into a three-quarter deflection and on down to lesser deflections. Although the amount of lead necessary becomes smaller, it is increasingly difficult to hold the pipper ahead of the target. While it is a simple matter to convert knot speed into mill lead, you should thoroughly familiarize yourself with a wide range of knot speeds and their corresponding mill leads so that they become automatic. A list such as this one should be made up and it must be memorized. By far the most common fault is to under lead. Therefore, Always use the greatest assistance lead. The target will pull down all the lead you can hold, and if your fire is sustained and in the line of flight, you will hit. For an example, let's take this Kawanishi flying boat, Type 91. The tail high attitude indicates he's flying at top speed, 120 knots. If you are going to make a beam run on him, the ratio of three for target speed and two for mill units will give you a lead of 80 mils. Since his length is 55 feet, he should cover 55 mils in your sight when you are close enough to fire. All right, open fire. Okay, nice shooting. From our knowledge of enemy aircraft, we recognize this plane to be a Nakajima torpedo bomber. It is traveling at a speed of 180 knots. By applying our thumb rule of 3 to 2, we get 120 mils. Wait a minute. You forgot to consider the target angle. This is not going to be a full deflection shot. The angle is about 30 degrees requiring a lead of one half of the full deflection or 60 mils. If you go to sea in the Atlantic, you may encounter a Focke Wolf courier. This plane is making a bombing approach at 180 knots. Now, if you're going to start shooting at an angle of 45 degrees, what lead will you give him? A beam shot would require full deflection. Applying the 3 to 2 ratio against 180 knots would give you a full lead of 120 mils. But you are going in at 45 degrees, so use 3 quarters of the full lead, or about 90 mils. That does it. Hmm, not bad. 